今黄金のマスクがよみがえるパーソナルワークステーション X6 万8000 Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO Terrican Reading Series on the Sharp X68000 and today we have a video that's going to be unlike every other video in this series because for as many final fights and twin bees and Castlevanias there are on the Sharp X68000 and some incredible ports like Ghouls and Ghosts, there are visual novels. These basically kept the system alive. Some of them were aimed towards a more mainstream audience and some were definitely for the late night crowd. We have to talk about the fact that these games are a lot of what kept these systems alive, whether it's MSX2, PC98, or X68000, these type of more adult themed titles what really sold computers and kept people using these things. Just like back in the day, VHS beat out Betamax for a very specific reason. Some of the films they carried on VHS were more to a late night audience's taste, if you know what I mean. So we're going to be talking about two games today, one I've shown on the channel before and one that's brand new, and we're starting off with Virgin Angel, which you're looking at here. And to say this game is an absolute aesthetic vibe would be an understatement. This splash screen here, the PCB with all of of the different chips, the capacitors, along with pills and bullets, is just one of the most unique things you can see on the Sharp X68000 or PC98. And interestingly enough, there are X68000 versions of this game online, even though it's way more synonymous with the PC98. But I would say the overall color ways, all of these sprites and images here, just look absolutely spectacular. And of course, it is the Thirsty episode, so it definitely has that content as well. Now, as far as these games go, I am a very read it for the articles type of person. I love seeing the artwork. I love seeing the visual novel nature, but there's nothing really about the content that is there for me as far as why I would play the game. What I really want to talk about is the historical context of just how important these games were to these systems. It wasn't as big in the US having adult games on PC. Sure, there were some, but it really was a very big niche. Or if you go over to Japan, like I said, every single Final Fight copy sold, there was probably a visual novel sold in equal numbers that had this type of content, and that's what keeps platforms alive. Now moving over to the second game and the one that has way more of an actual game involved in it is the man called Dracula. I talked about this maybe a year and a half ago in a just there for the vibes episode and I did an episode on it like six years ago on the channel. This is absolutely a spectacular 2D point and click adventure game in the visual novel aesthetic and it has a lot of that thirsty content that maybe gamers in Japan were definitely more gravitating towards back in the day because even to today it is a region that gets more of these games than pretty much anywhere else and it really was platforms like the Sharp X68000 where this type of gameplay style really kind of got its stride in. And honestly, it's not that weird in the US market either. We had games like Phantasmagoria and A Puzzle of Flesh, which definitely pushed the theming as far as what a point and click adventure game could become. So we really did have those titles in North America. We just didn't have them very often. And they were always usually full motion video titles. They didn't really seem to go into the 16-bit bitmap art aesthetic. But as we move a little bit further into the man called Dracula, this definitely fits the overall theming of the game. If you think about what Dracula is as a media franchise, he is always this lustful creature. He's always looking for a bride, and he almost always finds her via some means of seduction and hypnosis. And that's basically what you're doing in this game here as well. But as far as the actual artwork is concerned, the bounding box that the game takes place in, this just looks absolutely incredible coming off an X68000. All of the dithering, all of the aesthetic here really just has a feel that no other games ever Ever really shown me and that's why I really do want to do this episode it's so much fun to talk about the games that you would not expect on a platform because the sharp x68000 has a rich lineage of having pretty much every single genre represented we have shmups we have beat-em-ups we have fighting games even first-person shooters on the platform but visual novels really did keep the system alive long after there was hardware on the market that was better performant as far as actually running games is concerned and a lot of times it was down to titles like this the man called Dracula I'd probably say would be tame in comparison Comparison to what Virgin Angel is, but honestly, both just have their place in the history of PC gaming, and both are worth talking about for many numerous reasons outside of their actual content. And one of the reasons is Virgin Angel has an absolutely outstanding soundtrack as well. So go ahead and listen for 45 seconds, and I'll come back and talk about the thirstier side of the Sharp X68000. But enjoy!
I mean, it's absolutely spectacular music. You'd want to hear that coming out of any sort of PC or your headphones back in the day. But as far as Virgin Angel is concerned, there definitely is content in here that is going to push the envelope way more than The Man Called Dracula. And obviously, that isn't really stuff that I can fully show you. Just kind of allude around the edges, too. Because, again, this is my channel, and I do need to be a little bit careful about that. But even outside of the things I can't show you, just look at these images here. Just how lush they are. I love the pseudo-pastel colors and everything else we're seeing. And it does feel completely different than the man called Dracula but moving back into that again this one is definitely more of a slow burn there is a lot of story here and unfortunately I'm never going to be able to understand it all because as of the recording of this video it's never been translated into English and I'm sure it never will be either these are not the type of titles that you're going to hear many people talk about you might see a screenshot or two of them online just talking about the overall pixel aesthetic of the x68000 or the PC98 but no one's ever going to really get into the nitty-gritty of what the content truly is and this game in particular has always held my fascination these strange characters why is that little man holding a clock a pool with three heads on it and if you touch one head the pool fills up I've always been curious exactly what is going on in this game and part of the fascination is I'll probably never actually get to find out what in fact is happening here but it's always intrigued me and it's always been down to that unique visual style because there's so many different ways to play a game like Final Fight. There's only one way to play the man called Dracula, and that is on the Sharp X68000, making this one of the most unique games on the platform, in my opinion. Well, leave me a comment down below and tell me if you ever played any of the visual novels in Japanese on the X68000 start to finish. For me, the only one I've ever finished is this game, and that is because I wanted to kind of see what the ending would be like. And even if I didn't understand the story, it was totally worth my time, because again, I am here for the aesthetic. These games have such an app. Atmosphere. They've got such an art style that just really is synonymous with Japanese PC gaming in the 90s, and it's something that as many developers try to replicate to this day, it really did have its time and place, and nothing 100% gets close to where it would be. And again, The Man Called Dracula is just a lush looking game. Outside of the few bits that I can't show you, everything else in this game, from the music to the overall imagery to even how the game is laid up with the UI elements, it just works, and it does feel like such a unique and special experience and it makes perfect sense it's on a system like the x68000 because if you think about it these were not cheap computers maybe you were an office salary man maybe you had an x68000 at home so you could bring work home for you because apparently the japanese never stopped working and maybe on nights or weekends you and your kids play a few video games on it as well when everyone's asleep and you kind of want to relax and unwind you play an adult themed visual novel and again no judgment for the people out there that play these games for that specific reason it's just not one of the things i do but i've got zero judgments if you're into it and honestly the art in all of these games is some of the best art of the 90s these developers were every bit as talented as mainstream developers and in the art department maybe they even had a little bit more talent because these games are as pretty if not prettier than anything that came out from mainstream devs back in the day and there's a reason why these games continue to come out long after the effective lifespan of the sharp x68000 they kept the platform alive and a lot of people got their start in development on these type of visual novel games right here they are as important to video game history as anything else is out there even if they definitely aren't the mainstream because again i cannot stress enough how just aesthetically on this one screen right here how incredible virgin angel actually looks with this hyped up vibe just going all over the place bullets pills silicon it all works and again if you are there for the spicier content it has it to offer you as well and that's the interesting thing about these games they are both artistic in nature they both have very unique art styles, and they both have content that maybe you wouldn't want somebody to see if they were looking over your shoulder. But if you have any other recommendations on the Sharp X68000 visual novel front, leave them down below. And if it's something that could appear on YouTube, maybe I will show it in the future. Because this is kind of just a test video in that just here for the vibe series, just when I talk about games that are outside the norm for the channel or even for mainstream gaming, just for me to kind of play around with the overall channel formula and have some fun here and there. But we are getting close to the end of the Sharp X68000 series. That's always going to be a bummer, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. We do have a few more episodes left. And again, if you've never played The Man Called Dracula before, I can't recommend it enough. It is one of the strangest, most absurd, and most visually striking games on the Sharp X68000 or any other PC from back in the day. But short of that, we are done. Let me know what you think of the episode, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.